today we are going to be testing Colin Furze's house and bunker. Come with us. Right on dudes, come in. Good to meet you. So I went. So, got Mike and Dan here from Glencoe Radvac. They have come in to test radon gas. Now, I've seen people in the comments have said, Colin, you're going to get radon gas. It will kill you and do all sorts of things. So, we've got some boys to test it. Right, tell me about the radon. What is it? Can it get through stuff? Should I be worried? Radon's a naturally occurring radioactive gas. It comes from the decay of uranium at up to five miles in the Earth's crust. It's in all rocks and soils. Yeah. So it's coming out of the rocks you're digging out. Okay. Tunnels. Now you've done a test, haven't you? We are in, I or well, I'm in, not we, not you guys. I am in a yeah. high radon area. So yeah, there's a government website, uh, ukradon.org. Uh, you can type your postcode in and see if you're in a high risk area. Yeah. And where you are, you are in a high risk. So how many do you want down here? Then? Uh, I think one or two. Probably good for three. <laughs> I'd stick one there because yeah. I'm not, I don't go around there, so it's not going to get knocked, you know, like whacked with a spade or anything like that. Perfect. Obviously, there's the garage down here that might get displaced, but I'll, if I, I'll, I'll try my best. Right, we test the bunker as well, yeah? So, uh, tell me about the bunker. What was it, How did you construct it? What's around this? Seal. The tunnel, the bunker, the garage and everything are all being built the same. You dig a hole or you tunnel a hole and then you build like a steel frame within it and then flood it with concrete around the outside. This has got about a foot minimum pretty much everywhere. Right across it, underneath it and everything, it's about a foot of concrete. So it's pretty, it's pretty decent. Obviously from what you tell me about Radon, it'll still get in. The still get pesky in, yeah. little stuff. Um, the steel's four mil thick all the way around, apart from the ceiling where I think it's two mil for this. It was slightly, slightly thinner. Um, this is all 50 mil box section. Uh, there's obviously some plywood and some insulation on the floor. And I think that's about it, really. It's a Do sealed box. Do you have any box. polythene or anything around the outside? Yeah, we did on this. We did cover it in a polythene sheet, although in terms of rust protection, protection that's probably not the best thing because you can get like a moisture trap. Mm. Whereas if you just cover it in concrete, the concrete actually protects the steel. So you live and learn when you go with these things. Yeah. And that's just overlapped. Polythene yes, it's just stuff. overlapped. So from your radon perspective, that's not good enough. No. So no. We could potentially have some levels in here. We'll, we'll, see. Yeah. we'll see after we've tested. Have you heard of radon before? I had actually. Um, there's a village a little bit, I don't know if it's north, I think it's north of here called Castle Bytham. And I can remember when I was a plumber, that for some reason that was always like really high. There was like a row of houses or something in Castle Bife which had like really high levels in it or something. Mm. Um, but it's kind of weird because like I did know about it, but then I don't know if it's because of those conversations whether I just thought we didn't get any in Stamford. Because like from all the, you know, building firms that we used to go and do the plumbing for, nobody really mentioned it that much. It always seemed to me like it was something that was not quite here. Yeah. That's, it was awareness else. is still pretty low yeah. on radon. Um, this is a radon affected area. It's one of the highest risk factors on the radon map. Um, so you can potentially have elevated levels in yeah. your house and in your bunker. Um, but unless you do a test, you don't know what levels are. No. Anywhere in the country could have high levels. It can come through concrete. There's three million atoms on a pinhead. Yeah. So it is minute and it will, go, it will transfer through concrete, through polythene and eventually through metal. Obviously the metal is not 100% 100% sealed at yeah. all, so it can be drawn in. So obviously I've got low level ventilation down there, there's a fan there, and then there's high level ventilation up there. Yep. So other than that, if we did have high levels of radon, what else would we have to do other than make sure that that potentially comes Unfortunately, on? Unfortunately, you'd have to fill it all in. You'd have to <laughs> <laughs> no, we could look at pushing positive pressure in, so bringing more air in than what's coming out, yeah. which creates a slightly positive pressure in this bunker Yeah. to suppress the radon entry and then dilute, dilute and dilute any radon that's come into the room. So could you nearly close off a bit of that? 
potentially so that make that yeah. smaller so that the inlet is definitely bigger than the outlet yes you could do it's a bit like food isn't it sort it, of thing this hole's bigger than this hole it will be a little bit of suck it and see to be honest yeah so you might push more air in and yeah. the levels could go up or down you might okay. have to take more air out to to see what works best right nothing to worry about then colin <laughs> Now, to do the tests, you've got two methods. You've got like some biscuits, or as you call them. They're, I mean, they're just Detectors. little, they're little detector caps sort of thing. They call them biscuits because I mean they don't even look like biscuits. If no. I'm honest with you, they don't look like. I don't call them biscuits. Like, no, well, then one of you called them biscuits on like the phone. I thought it was an ant trap. So anyway, we've got these little things which we've dotted all around the house. Now you've put one in the lounge and one in the bedroom in the house, which is like the standard procedure. Yeah, that's what we do on any normal house. But we've got belt and braces, we've put some in the kitchen, we've put them in the tunnel entrance, in the house, and is there any more anywhere? No, that was it, wasn't it? We just yeah. put the next ones in the kitchen. Now, as well as that, we've put one in here in the shed, mm -hmm. we've put two down in the tunnel, and then we've put one in the garage, and of course, we've also done the underground bunker. Yeah. So we should be pretty much covered, shouldn't we, for yes. tests? Yes. Yeah, so as you said with the house, that gives you your annual average in your house, and these are giving you your hot spots. So yeah. if there's any levels of radon, we'll see exactly where it's coming from. Now, I suppose my thinking is, if the bunker turns out to be okay, then technically once this is finished, that mm -hmm. should be similar, shouldn't it? Because it's pretty much the same construction mm -hmm. method. Yeah. So now I was thinking, oh, it's a gas. We've got concrete, we've got four mil plate steel. It's not gonna come through that, but no. it is, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So there's no such thing as a radon barrier, really. It just restricts the amount of air flood that comes through the floor. So if you have one pinhole on your in your barrier, then yeah. three million uh, atoms put on the, on a pinhead will come straight through there, which means you've lost your protection. Right. So it's pretty much can get through anything. Yeah. So the chances are we're going to find some radon gas, but it's just how much. So in terms of the levels, what's like. I mean, I don't suppose it matters really because we can't really quantify this, can we? Whether we say 200 or 300 is bad. You yeah. can't smell it, you can't see it. it so just... there's action levels in houses and uh, commercial. Action levels in a workplace is 300 becquerels. Action levels in your home is 200 becquerels per cubic metre. Right. The average for the UK is 20 to 24 becquerels. So if you're above the 200, yeah. then you should look to reduce your levels. Right. Um, if you're below 200, then you should be fine. If you're, you can go up to thousands and thousands of becquerels. Okay. Um, but 200 is the action level. Okay. So if we've got more than 200, we need to do something about it. And then in terms of what we do, you, I mean, obviously we've got ventilation in the bunker. I've got my low level fan and I've got my vent. I suppose to get my head around is making it a positive pressure room. So if we pump more air in than can escape from the room, then the kind of the pressure goes up and then it's you're not going to want to get, or oh, you're diluting it, or is it yeah. trying to push it out sort of thing? Doing both, it's diluting and suppressing the radon entry into the tunnels and the bunkers. Yeah. The house might be looked at slightly differently, um, but we'll have to work out where the highest levels are and if that's affecting the house, Yeah. We'll probably treat them differently. Yeah. Now I know I've not got a radon barrier in the house because when we uh, pierced through up to come into the pantry there was no like plastic membrane or anything, yeah. it was just straight concrete straight onto the floor. So technically if I have got it in the house then I've had it in the house forever yeah. obviously but we potentially have made it worse because Colin has gone and put a tunnel system underneath it and therefore given the radon an easier path to get into my house. You've created a, a ginormous radon sump under your house and just connected it to your house. Yeah. Potentially, yeah. So you could have <laughs> so, I mean, well you're grinning, but you know. So if it, yeah. if we do get high levels of it, it potentially can give you lung cancer. Yeah. Um, you said it's the second cause second, of death behind smoking. The second highest cause of lung cancer behind smoking, so it's the leading cause for non-smokers. Non-smokers. Yeah. But like you said, it could be worse because, of course, if you've got radon poisoning, but you're a smoker and you die, they'll put it down to smoking, not radon. Yes. <laughs> so we'll see. We've done the test. We've also got some electronic ones which we've put down, but they're not as accurate. They will give you a sort of more of a real-time reading. You see yeah. they're like 25% either way, a plus or minus or something, didn't they? So, yeah. yeah. So we're looking for the annual average. They fluctuate every single day. So today it could be high, tomorrow it could be low. If you look at it today and it's high, you could panic. But your I'm, annual I'm average... I'm not going to panic. <laughs> so. But your annual average, as long as that's below 200, then you're good. Cool. Well, I say I'm not going to panic. Right. If it's like 3,000 every day, then I'll yeah. be like, 
Yeah. You're on the phone to us. Okay. Yeah, but like, <laughs> Mike, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to get poisoned. Yeah. Cool. Right. Thanks for coming yeah. and doing that. Obviously, we're not going to know the proper results for three months' time, but we've got all the tests in place. So everyone in the comments saying about radon, we're dealing with it. Well, we're not dealing with it. We're finding if we need to deal with it. Yes. So cheers for coming, boys. See you in three months. Yeah. Much appreciated. Excellent. Yes. I think they bring some real biscuits next time. <laughs> Brilliant. See you later. Thanks for watching this video and for staying to the end. If you'd like to test your own home for radon, then please go to the link in the description below. Thanks to Colin for allowing us to come and make this video. There will be a new video soon with Colin with the results. So please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.